Hey guys, welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Andre Seegers, and this time we're joined by Sean Buckley from Engadget to discuss our hands-on impressions of the Super NES Classic Edition. So, let's get started. Alright, Sean, you and I both had the opportunity to play with the SNES Classic a couple weeks ago for about half an hour or so, and I just want to sit down and talk with you about it, because I don't know how you feel about it, I'm kind of in love with this thing. I think it's kind of freaking awesome. But what do you think? I think they did a, such a great job of... Of, I mean, like, supply sides, supply, supply woes aside, they did a great yeah, job we'll with the physical that. object <laughs> and, and continuing continuing the idea of the first one mm -hmm. to an extent that it feels like a sequel in a way. It does. Not just because it's the next way up, because they said, hey, we did it this way, we can do it a little bit better this time in all these other ways. Right. And I was really surprised to see improvements. I literally expected the same experience with SNES games, but it's a little bit more than that. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it, it builds on the foundation of the NES Classic. Everything that thing did well, this thing does just as well, if not better in some ways. Like adding the uh, the rewind feature, which is awesome and pretty important for, or you know, for some of these more action you know oriented games that can be really tough. Although in hindsight, I wish she, the NES Classic had that as well. But that's an awesome addition, being able to rewind games from any from any of your quick save points. And yeah, and this, the selection of games here are fantastic. These are some of the best games ever made, uh, let alone like, you know, 20 of them from, you know, of, on the Super Nintendo all in one single unit. Like, it's awesome. Even though there are fewer of them here than on the NES Classic, there's so much less filler. Yeah, it's it feels like a really good selection. It's, it's hard to take in. I mean, it's it's all I own a lot of these games on cartridge <laughs> right. today because they're such great games. I've gone back and I've spent like since I lost my Super Nintendo. I don't know why so many of us like let our our classic consoles go, but I did. So many That's of these games I spent the last like 15 years recollecting, you know, <laughs> right. and and some of them are kind of rare. I still don't have a physical copy of Earthbound because it's just too much to buy. I can't afford that. But mm -hmm. when it came out on the Wii U, it was, you know, it's like a great. I mean, I'm never going to play it again on the Wii U, but <laughs> maybe I'll play it again on the SNES Classic. Yeah, it's it's just like a really compelling package. You know, for $70, you get 20 awesome games plus Star Fox 2, so 21. Well, I should say they're not all awesome to me, but most of them are awesome. <laughs> What's not awesome to you on this? Uh, so I think, um... Oh god, what uh I had to look at the list real quick. There's there's one game specifically on there that I'm like, eh, that one's that while one's you're while you're looking at that, I'll talk about mine. I'm not in love that. with Street Fighter. Um Street Fighter is a classic fighting game. Right. I'm never really much of a fighting game guy, but it's like but I, I don't begrudge it being on there at all. There's I wouldn't replace it with anything because Street Fighter is such an iconic part of of uh, of a Super Nintendo history. Like right. it was the home I think it was the preferred home version of the game. Um I recall over the I don't remember why, the Genesis. Uh, the Genesis went out on Mortal Kombat, if I recall. Mm -hmm. But like, it's it's it, and so many of the games are like that. You have, you have the classic RPGs that were a big deal on that. That, that the diehard RPG fans are on. Final Fantasy three is on there. You've got Secret of Mana. Um, you've got Mario RPGs on there as well. I think. Yeah, right? it is. Yeah. Which which really surprised me because it's so hard to get a copy of that as well. Um, but you also have like Super Mario World. You have Yoshi's Island. You have so many of these iconic games, and Street Fighter totally belongs on there. But you know, it's like the NES Classics. Not everything's for everybody. I'm not. I'm not a Street Fighter fan. If I if I if I manage to get an SNES Classic somehow, I'm never even gonna boot that one up. Yeah. So I mean, I'm with you in that sense. Like some of the games on here don't personally appeal to me, but I see their intrinsic value to you know both in history and to a lot of people. Um, so Street Fighter's that game for me as well. But the game I was thinking of was Kirby's Dream Course. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's like the filler title here. Granted, I never played it all the way, but that's because it didn't. Like, I got bored of it like ten minutes in. Um, yeah, Kirby games. Kirby games. You either love them or you don't. You yeah. know, it's it's. I don't think anybody hates Kirby games, but like, you either love them or you don't. Well, on the other hand, we have Kirby Superstar here, which might be one of the best Kirby games ever made. And in a way, that being like eight games in one, that's essentially twenty nine games on the super or twenty eight games on the Super <laughs> NES Classic. So closing that gap. <laughs> that's it exactly. I want to touch before we get too much into the games because we can nerd about out about that forever. Some of those improvements that were made to the hardware that I think that you might not think about or notice, um, and some of the things that they uh, they still haven't fixed. <laughs> okay, so let's get into that. So what have you? What did they not fix here? Compared to the well, okay, so they, they they fixed a bunch of things. Like for instance, the uh, the Super Nintendo controller's cable is longer than the the NES Classic cable, two feet, which yeah. was 
which was a big problem. But it's still kind of not long enough to really use in your living room. It's still short. It's just it's just long enough now where you don't have to keep it in your lap anymore. But that's yeah, yeah that's not long enough. So it's just long enough where you don't you don't have to sit on the floor. Exactly. But it's still not long enough that you don't need an extra long HDMI well, cable you, to put that thing on your coffee table. Yeah, you have to lean forward still to play your games, probably. <laughs> yeah, and and tying into that. There's still no way to get to the menu from the controller. Yes. And, and I understand the... And they even, they even talked to me about this event when I complained about it. They said, well, we don't want to ruin the perfect look and classic feel of the controller. And I totally understand that. But, you know, if you plug in, let's say, in a 8-bit-0 uh, controller into your Nintendo Switch, you can press down and select, a combination that no game ever uses anywhere ever in the history of the world. Exactly. Uh, to, to pull up the Switch menu. And that's a really nice feature to have. And maybe not everyone would use it if you implemented that onto the the SNES Classic Edition. But it's something that I really miss because sometimes I would plug in a, a Nintendo Classic controller into the NES Classic and have a controller I didn't want to use, but I could at least use the home button on it to get to the menu. Right. And so not not having an option for that is is kind of something I'm I'm a bit disappointed by. I'm totally with you there. Like I feel like they could have done some kind of soft reboot thing as you mentioned. You know, on the uh, there's been a some platforms, I think, before, or games specifically, where if you held LR, start, and select, you would go back to the main menu. And they could have done something where if you held it down for like two or three seconds, then that would reboot you to the main menu. Because no yeah. game uses that combination uh, for more than a second, if at all. So I wish they had figured out something. Or just put like a small, like put like a small, like sync style button on there or something. It wouldn't really Like up the by the wire. Yeah, can, exactly. You know, where you don't even notice it. Yeah, bingo. So I, I'm with you there. I wish they had done that because that is annoying. Um, especially now that you have longer cables, you have to reach a little bit farther now to hit that reset button, so... Right, right. On the other hand, I understand why that, you know, works to their advantage. It kind of remembers that classic. If you wanted to reset a game on the old thing, you had to get up and get to your console, which usually wasn't right next to you uh, when you when you played with it. So, I mean, I understand that. And, and to that point, even though I don't think that's a good excuse, if we're being honest, I just, I understand that's the perspective. Uh, but to that point, um, the original NES Classic had a... Uh, a power button that felt like perfect it felt exactly like the original in miniature but like a reset button that was this hard uncomfortable didn't feel quite right the reset button on the SNES classic is perfect the yep. left the left slider on the American version I don't know about on the the Japanese and, and PAL versions uh, the left version clicks in just like it's supposed to and the left one slides up with the spring and it feels really good and it really reminds me of, of playing with cartridges back I kind of forgot how that felt <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm with you. Like, they did a great job. You know, it, it feels like a small Super Nintendo. I love that, yeah, they had the same sliding motion. Um, they pretty much yeah. nailed it, except for one except for one thing, and it actually relates to the controllers. I think it's kind of funny that they were so hell-bent on apparently getting the controllers just right. And yet, you know, I, for me, it's not, it's not a big deal. But the fact that they had to flip down the front yeah. to get the controller ports, and it kind of ruins the look of the Super Nintendo. I'm like, ah, you know... I, I know why they did it. They use the same ports as as on the NES Classic and the uh, the Wii, you know, the Wii Classic controller. But mm -hmm. I wish it, you know, I really wish they had been able to redesign them so they actually look like Super Nintendo controller ports instead. Well, the question there is is uh, it, like assuming they couldn't do that because that that means creating a new part and they don't want to that cost. Would you rather have the front of the Super Nintendo have the wrong ports instead of the facade that you can now put up now? Because like that was one of my other problems with the NES Classic. The NES Classic had the reset button that didn't feel right, um, and instead of having the proper controller ports, there were these ones that didn't fit within the confines of of the design of the of the black bar that those controller ports normally go on. And so it always looked a little funky to me. It's still cute, and I still like it. But the SNES Classic, I'm like, well, you could hide it behind that. So if you're using, if you're not playing it, and you're using it as a set piece to sit on your desk and look cool, at least it can look right. And so like. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if I think that compromise is better because flipping it up is still, or flipping it down, which you, you have to pull from the bottom to get it to do, which is confusing. That's funky, but on the other hand, I don't think I would want the classic controller ports on the front without being able to be hidden. That's a really interesting comparison because I don't know if I ever consciously recognized that the ports on the NES Classic were bigger than the black bar or bigger than they were on the NES. I'm looking at it now and I see what you're talking about. Yeah, it totally um, bugged me. <laughs> but the fact that <laughs> I can see that, uh, but like for me, since I didn't recognize it, like I thought they got close enough. I'm like, okay, I, you they know, did. that's fine. Whereas on the Super NES Classic, you know, so for me, I'm gonna have the controllers in, you know, connected pretty much all the time. I was gonna throw it in a closet or something. So that means the it's act like it's actively looking worse than I wished it would at all, you know, at all times. So I'm never gonna there's never gonna be a point where I have that front of that unit closed. So I kind of yeah. wish it maybe just throwing ports on the back or something and they're wrapped around. But you know, maybe. 
that would look weird too, so. You know, the compromise they would never do that I think would look better is if you had the same ports as they, like, ha like look at, make it look exactly like a Super Nintendo. In a flip up door, you have, and it would be the perfect size, a regular standard USB port in the middle of each controller port. Oh, there and you then go. you would have, yeah, and then you'd have this Super Nintendo controller that you could also use uh, as a USB controller on your PC or on other devices. Oh, uh, maybe even with the Switch because the Switch has USB ports. Um, but instead, they went with this, uh, this you know, classic controller adapter, which is still weird to me because that adapter is dead. It's completely dead. <laughs> it you, is. you can't. I mean, the Wii U is out of production. Uh, they don't make Wii remotes anymore. I mean, you can still buy them. There's tons of them around. Um, but they're not something you can sync to your Switch like you could sync them to the Wii U. Right. So it's like, like last year it made sense because the Wii U was still around. But now. This is a defunct port. Yeah, you're right. It's dead. Um, there's really nothing that's going to use these again besides, God help us, maybe the N64 classic. <laughs> Who knows? No. Oh, gee. <laughs> right. Oh, gee. Do you, do you believe that's real? I think I, I think it'll happen. I do. Do you think... I had this interesting discussion to get off topic. I had an interesting discussion it. with another Sean, uh, uh, Sean Hollister over at CNET, longtime friend of mine. We were hanging out at his house, and he's like, he's like, I think they're going to make a Virtual Boy classic. And I was like, what? What? Okay, what no. <laughs> yeah. He thinks... He thought... He was, he was he was wondering if they were going to make a Virtual Boy classic, and it was going to be a self-contained VR thing, because the parts to build that are super cheap now, so you could, in theory, do that. And I countered with this, and I think they should do this. They should make a Virtual Boy classic smartphone app and uh, Google Cardboard type like accessory you buy for it. Hey, that's not a bad idea. That that yeah, that, that's a real. I like that. That's a really good idea. They can make the whole thing like you know fully red like the original Virtual Boy. Yeah, or if they really want it to be uh, internal completely, they could make a uh, switch accessory for it where you drop the switch inside of the Virtual Boy style uh, holder and oh, use that man. on your desk. Yeah. You might be onto something. See, I actually really like that a lot. I actually felt like they missed a huge opportunity by not remaking those games on the 3DS. They, yeah, that always yeah bothered, that always bothered me. Like no one, most people like really no one played those games. Wario Land is legitimately a great game. Yeah, and I liked Red uh, Red Red whatever. Yeah, the, Red Alarm. The, I think or Red, Red Alarm. Alarms. I liked that a lot yeah. when I played it. I, I only ever played the Virtual Boy at the Target in store demo. The, yeah, <laughs> I, that was me for a while until my uh, one of my friends' um, brothers gave it to me for free. He was just oh, sick nice. of it, and yeah, so he gave it that gave it to me for free in five games. Mario Tennis, th that's where it started. That was a great game. Mario Clash is all right, and uh, Nestor's Funky Bowling, man, that might be the best bowling game still to this day. <laughs> There's yeah, so, so many I, bowling I, games. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, the the perfect Virtual Boy Classic is the uh, the original non 2DS 3DS, and I I wish they would do that, but. Um, that's where I would like to see this eventually go. An N64 Classic, that's fine. That'd be good even. We've never really had a really good, high-quality way to play H uh, play N64 games over HDMI. But I want them to end it with the Virtual Boy somehow. Just because... <laughs> but the problem is, the Virtual Boy Classic could literally contain every game ever it, released for all, that system. All, all 15 of them, exactly. All 15 of them, right. Yeah, you're right. Um, I, but there's probably not enough value in that. You'd have to sell it for like 30 bucks. <laughs> I like your style, though. I mean, when they, they're, they're going to run out of consoles to do eventually, so maybe they'll do it. And going back to SNES. Yeah, classic, to bring it back, uh, what do you think of the new frame feature? Oh, you... right. I, I kept forgetting it was there two or three times <laughs> during our meeting. Right. Like our, our Nintendo representative, he was like, hey, hey, you should, you should put a frame on. I'm like, oh, yeah, there's frames. You know, uh, it's all right. I don't mind at all. I usually don't like frames around around things in my games because I'm, I'm still paranoid that something's going to screen burn in if it stays there too long. Hey, well, they you do know, have the, the ones that change color now, so... Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I liked... I did like them, um, but, like, I probably will never use them. <laughs> no, I'm the exact same way. I'm like, oh, that's neat, but it's, like, the biggest non-edition of all time. Like, I'm going to stick with the black one, I think, the black frame. I don't want... Like, I find the frame distracts in the gameplay. Yeah, maybe maybe the really there's a really subtle one that looks super 90s and it's got like some like lasers going into a field in the background. I think they do have that actually. Yeah, they do have that one. Yeah. That one's that one's the other one I might use, but for the most part the other ones they're not themed to the game like right. uh like Game Boy Color or Game Boy Super Game Boy style. You know, I had the exact same reminder, like I was reminded of that and I was hoping yeah. like I wonder if there's like idle screen or idle animations for those borders like on the Super Game Boy. I'm probably not, yeah. but that would be awesome. But wouldn't wouldn't it be great if each game had its own cut? Oh, that'd be amazing. I, think that's I agree. A little bit of a missed opportunity there. That's a huge missed opportunity. I'm totally there with you. So yeah. Um. But I think I think overall the borders 
and particularly the rewind feature do a good job of like saying you know we made this thing and everyone liked it but you know other retro game collections if you buy it on the playstation 4 or whatever have these features just built in they're standard now maybe we should get one of those like if you get disney afternoon collection which is exclusively a nintendo game collection right uh, that's not on nintendo come on guys <laughs> uh it rewind is just part of the controller functions you, you'll get hit and then you'll just press the l button and, and rewind. Obviously, there's not enough buttons on the SAS controller to do it, so they have this kind of funky... It works, I don't like it, but it works, where you, um... You, you, you make... Whenever you make a save state, you can rewind from that. Right. Um, but it is a little clunky. You can't rewind multiple times, like, uh, or within just a quick seconds, because every time you use that feature, you have to go back to the menu, which means getting up, which means pressing the reset button. Um, I still really like it, but it still has these little user interface problems that I wish were just a little better. Yeah, I'm... I, I kind of agree, like, it is a good addition, but it's not the most elegant of solutions. Like, Rare Replay did the same thing, we can just hit reset, or we can rewind at any time, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be nice. At the same time, maybe it strikes a good middle ground, where you're kind of, you know, it provides some incentive not to abuse that feature constantly. Um, so That's you're, true. So you're still kind of playing these games a little bit as they were intended. Otherwise, the you... only reason I beat a lot of games in the Disney Afternoon <laughs> Collection is because I was essentially cheating. Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. I mean, same thing for Rare Replay. Like, I don't think anyone beat Balotelli without using the rewind feature these days. So yeah, yeah. Now, get back to the game selection real quick. So we already talked about how like the games here, by and large, are like the selection here is fantastic. But there are some omissions here I I found. So you were talking about RPGs earlier and how it has you know pretty good selection of them, but it is still missing one of the biggest ones from that era. I think so. Yeah. Chrono Trigger. Where yes, is Chrono absolutely. Trigger? Yeah. Chrono Trigger is hands down, like, I, I have called it my favorite game for a long time. A lot of people have. Yeah, and just because, like, if you're going to choose a game, like, I decided in high school, it's, it's got to be Chrono Trigger <laughs> because it has it has everything. And it was before I was even a fan of Akira Toriyama stuff, you know? Right. And, like, that, the, 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 I didn't actually start looking at the artist behind that game until the recent years. But um, it's such a great game. Great art, great writing, great battle, a revolutionary battle system, absolutely. to be honest. Nothing's quite done it since. Um, yeah, it is a big omission, and it's it's a strange omission because there's other Square stuff on it, and like it, it can't be an out of space. How hard would it have been to add another Square game on there? Yeah. Do you think would you have preferred uh, Chrono Trigger versus Final Fantasy three or six? I mean, I might have personally. Um, but on the other hand, if I buy it, I've never beaten Final Fantasy VI. I kept getting halfway through, and I would get a corrupt save file or something. Oh wow! So I'm more. I'm guess I'm more likely to go back and play that. Um, but it's kind of hard to say. I mean, I might have, if you're going with my favorite personal games, I might have preferred Final Fantasy 2 or 4, mm -hmm. I kind of do that, over 6 because that was, that was like my first real RPG. So I have a lot of nostalgia for that and it's very classic and, right. uh, you know, I feel like it doesn't jump the shark anywhere. It's hard to say. I, you know, a lot of people are going to disagree with this. I kind of would have preferred Secret of Evermore to Secret of Mana. Wow, yeah. I don't think you're gonna find too many that agree with you there. <laughs> I don't I don't know why. I I have a lot of fondness. Secret of Mana is a great game. Um, but I like that Secret of Evermore, maybe as an addition, at least in our region, Secret of Evermore is this really unique US only version of like Secret of Mana. Like it uses the same battle system and it tells this really surreal, interesting story with great characters and so many fantastic jokes in there. And it's just never seen any kind of re-release, and I just want it back. Yeah, yeah. I mean that, that. I mean that's a good point. There was an argument to be made. You know, maybe you know a lot of the games here are games people already own in multiple forms. Maybe they just have some more obscure games on there. You know, games yeah. that people didn't really play much back in the day or didn't sell well. Um, you know, games like Star Race FX. <laughs> what yeah, the, where is that? Um, but another glaring omission, though, going by bigger games, Donkey Kong Country Two. Like that, oh, yeah. that is considered by many to be one of the, I mean, not just one of the best Donkey Kong games, but one of the best platformers ever made. Uh, and it's missing, even though the first one's here. Like, I, I almost felt like the Donkey Kong trilogy could have almost been what the Mario trilogy was on the NES classic. So it's weird to me that they missed that opportunity to have all three here, even if, if three is on the weaker end compared to the other two. But like two is such a weird, like, why is that not here? I totally agree. There's things like that. Like, a lot of people are, are saying, oh, well, you know, it, there's only 21 games, but they're so high quality, it's okay that there's not as many as uh, on the NES Classic. But I kind of disagree. I do see that as a fault, because there are enough games that Nintendo has in its, it, that it could have just put on there itself without reaching out to partners that could have filled it out up to 30 easily. And, right. like, things like Donkey Kong Country, for instance. Yeah, I'm with you. One other one that I would have liked 
Mario All Stars. If only, oh. if only to help appease people who couldn't find the NES Classic too. Yeah. There you go. You get you know three then, different Mario's right there, or four Mario's. And then you could then you could have had like yeah four other you know it's like four more games in one game. <laughs> exactly. And Mario, and Mario All Stars is still kind of hard to get. I mean, you can walk into any store and get it for your Wii, but I mean, who still has their Wii hooked up? A lot of people I know don't even have their Wii U hooked up. Yeah. You know, it's it's kind of a shame. I feel like. I feel like the omission of these games would tease like a second edition of each console, it's and I, I don't true. think that's I don't think that's coming. And I've, I've basically had Nintendo tell me this isn't happening, but I want it to happen anyway. Is I really wish, and I've said this to you before, that they would just take the BIOS off of the game, the complete system, and create it as a game on the Switch, so you could download NES Classic Edition Pack One, and when you start the game, it's literally the same thing experience you had if you plugged it into your TV, the NES Classic. Um, and then you could release Pack 2 with the next row of games, then you could have an SNES Classic 2 that would have Burger and Donkey Kong Country and more. Because it, it feels like that. They feel like Part 1 packages, in a way. Because there's so much good stuff on these consoles! There is, like, I mean, especially, I feel like especially with the Super Nintendo, like, that's where they're hitting their stride. And they could easily make a second, maybe a third one of these. With they could probably have, they could probably have four of them. Four would be yeah. a little weak, but they could do it. If they got the licenses from enough people, absolutely. I'm, I'm there with you. I I mean, I, I, I do wish, like, these had expansion options built in. Like, I wish you could download more games. I totally get why they didn't do that. That would really complicate things, add to the price. But at the same yeah. time, like I love the package here. I wish you could do more with it. But if these were digitized and they were they were Switch downloadables, I would happily pay sixty to eighty dollars for each pack. I, I it would be a no brainer. Yeah, I'm I, I'm kind of there with and, you. And if that was the future of Virtual Console, I would be a hundred percent satisfied. <laughs> Yeah, well, well was, okay, 95% satisfied. You still need the promise to port it to the next system <laughs> up, but that's, yeah, they're never going to do that. I mean, I just kind of want Virtual Console at all on Switch right now, but that's a different discussion. But I am willing, you know, despite the omissions, I really do think these are 20 Star games. I think the price is fair. Plus, there's one we haven't really talked about yet. Freaking Star Fox 2. It's, I know! <laughs> how awesome is that? I mean, this is a game I've literally been waiting decades for. I know I'm not the only one. Like, I've been waiting decades to play this game, and I'm glad my efforts paid off. Like, I never even bothered the emulation. I'm like, you know, I'm not a huge fan of, of using emulators because I don't like playing games yeah. on, my, on my PC with a non... You know, I could get a controller, but I don't think the performance is never quite right. Anyways, I'm like, I'll wait. Maybe it'll come out someday, and it's finally freaking here. And having played it, it's it was weird. But I had a good time with it. It feels almost like a uh, a prototype of later Star Fox games to come because they mined this game for like ideas elsewhere in the series. Some of them are still coming out, like the Walker mechanic in Star Fox Two. Right. Only just recently made the one on Wii U. Yeah, and Star there's Fox still Zero. and there's still ideas here that haven't really been used elsewhere. I think so, and there's characters as well. Um, so what did you think? What was it like for you going back to a game that's never released before, or that's you know, that we knew about but has never come out like 20 years? I'll admit this, I, I don't like emulators usually either. I've stopped generally using them a couple years ago because of various, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on a high horse about it, moral <laughs> implications, whatever. Uh, you hate me in, on Twitter and in the comments, whatever. But for this game, I, I knew that we were only going to have a limited amount of time. And so on the train ride to San Francisco to do the demo, I brought along an 8-bit-o controller and my laptop and I downloaded... Um, the leaked, there's, I'm not, I'm not endorsing this, don't go looking for it, but there is a leaked version of Star Fox 2 out there that's incomplete, so I got a feel for it ahead of time and I kind of knew what to expect. Nice. Um, that said, the, the final version we played is different than that, so if you have played that version, this is a, a little bit more polished, it's got a different translation, uh, some of the menu options are a little bit different, I think the way I changed views was not quite the same as it was, I, maybe I'm remembering this wrong, but it seemed like that was different than in the prototype, but... I really liked it, and I, I realized when I was playing it on, on the SNES Classic that it reminded me sort of of the uh, Super Nintendo port of Wing Commander, because like Wing Commander, except for better graphics, like Wing Commander, it's a space game, and you have like the all range mode thing that we saw in Star Fox 64. You can fly all around space in total full degrees, so it feels like a real space sim in a way that the first never did, and it's got these ancient graphics, so it feels like a 90s PC space sim, <laughs> sim in a way that we never got, and and I love those, man. My childhood was Wing Commander and, and Privateer and X-Wing and TIE Fighter and all that stuff, and so getting to experience this on a Super Nintendo is kind of like, oh, why did I have this when I was a 
kid, I didn't really like the first Star Fox because it gave me a headache, but this one was great. It kind of, you know, it kind of blew my mind uh, having that level of freedom in a Super Nintendo game with polygons. Yeah. Like, it, like I, I actually had trouble, like, processing it. Like, I was, I, I did an all-range mode battle, and I was treating it as, like, an on-rails thing. Because I couldn't wrap my mind around the fact I can turn 360 degrees in this game. It felt so weird. And I mentioned in my preview, it actually reminded me a little bit almost, like, it almost feels like a, a modern... Purposely style, you know, purposely retro style classic, like in a the, little bit, yeah, in the vein of like Sonic Mania, in that you have these what feel like more modern mechanics now because of how they've been in more recent Star Fox games, but with a super retro aesthetic, and I kind of loved it. <laughs> it it really brings up. Um, I'm gonna plug someone who's not either of us right now. It really brings up the history a lot. If you're in this, the Nintendo Life a couple years ago did a great expose with one of the creators about it and kind of how like ahead of its time it was in a lot of ways and how how it got fully completed. It's such a shame that it got it canceled because that is. article. It explains it basically didn't get cancelled because it wasn't a good game, but because the same release window it was set to come out with, the PlayStation came out. And the graphics were just such a big leap ahead, they just kind of figured it seemed like that, um... It's like, well, no one's gonna want to see our kind of hackneyed together Super FX chip graphics when they can get that. Mm -hmm. It's such a shame because it really is a really solid experience so far. I mean, we only played like we were only five, allowed like to play two minutes. levels. Yeah, yeah. We we played you nothing. Yeah, this is not. Yeah, my, this is not a review yet. Yeah. So. And my my first level was like a two minute encounter, and I said, ah, that was short. Can I just not use that recording and do it again? They're like, no, no, no. Just the first two. Then we got to shut it down. I was like, ah. Yeah, they're uh, they're pretty tight on their video restrictions there. Uh, what was really funny is during my demo, um, I wanted to grab footage of how the um, like when you're on the home screen, it starts you know starts uh, playing demos from your own recordings of the game from oh, your yeah. save points. Mario Mario selected Star Fox too. I'm like, no Mario, what are you doing? You can't show this again. I already recorded this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's another feature we actually didn't talk about um, that we should bring up here. The uh, the save state feature has an expanded special mode called like I think it's called like my gameplay demo. Right. And it uh, it goes to whatever save state you made and uses the last forty seconds for those sort of like uh, screensaver gameplay demos, which is really cool. So you could see like, oh, I did that. I it's not just this random demo that happens after you wait too long on the title screen. It's me. It is neat. It's really cool. Like. I mean, I wish, I mean, I, I probably won't have it often, I probably won't have it on often enough to really have that ever happen, but it's a yeah. cool feature, like, I I, mean, I kind of wish this was more, this was on a console I would use more often, like, on a Switch, or, yeah, rather, I think, I wish there were an idea other consoles to take advantage of, like, how cool would it be if you're on your Switch screen to see gameplay in the background of just some random game you're playing of, like, 30 seconds or something of it, like, it's a really cool idea. Yeah, it's pretty. It's it's a pretty neat little, and it's like that. That's what I meant when I said earlier. It, it feels more like a sequel, and hardware sequels are weird mm -hmm. because it takes these like, all right, here's what we did good. Let's see, can we make it a little bit better? And they don't they don't take any risks, you know, really, but they do do things that make it a little bit better. And that's it's nice to see that they weren't just pumping it out. That whoever was working on it, you know, I don't know who works on on the actual software saw a room for improvement, and made it happen. Yep, I agree with you. All right, Sean, I think we've pretty much touched on everything here, but do you have any final points you want to bring up before we wrap it up? I mean, there's the ever-present question about availability and how right. Nintendo might be able to handle that better. I don't want to get into that too much, really, but it is... It is I, I, let, to cut straight to the chase, I'll say the same thing everyone else is saying. It is rough that we can't get them, and Nintendo does have some cl complicity in that, and so it's the same thing I think everyone feels. I just wish these weren't temporary products, because I would be so much more relieved if I knew, maybe I won't be able to buy this now, but in eight or nine months, they might have some in stock that I'll be able to get, and then I would feel satisfied, because eventually. Yeah, it's... it. I, the the fact that it's a limited product is the thing that makes no sense to me. Like, why can't these be available more often? Like, it's like they're throwing it back into the Disney vault or something. They'll, maybe they'll bring it back <laughs> yeah. in 10 years and have something else, but... I imagine it's something to do with manufacturing issues. They only can have the factory for so long. I can understand the idea that maybe they shut down the NES classic production right, to make way for the SNES yeah. class. Like, it's probably the exact same facility. But yeah, I just, like everyone says, there's a lot to say. We could have a whole different show just about the stock problems. But I think the bottom line is that I think we all just wish it was a, a product that would be on the market for several years, not just a few months. Yeah, I think, I mean, just to, I don't want to get too into it either, but I think Nintendo could just work on their communication. Like, if they were just more open about things, you know, even just giving a heads up of, hey, this is going to be extremely limited, um, and also providing an idea of when pre-orders actually go live. I think that would help. I think it's just the fact that no one knows what's happening at all is, what's, is what adds to the aggravation. So I think if people had a better idea of what to expect, um, it might help mitigate that a little bit, even if 
you know, people aren't going to be happy by the fact they can't get one. But I think just, yeah. just knowing I'm, that in advance would help. On the other hand, they've said they're producing a lot more, and I'm, I think they're producing a lot more just beyond pre-orders. I'm holding out a little hope to be pleasantly surprised uh, as we get further into the year that maybe just after pre-orders there will be more around. Um, no guarantee on that, but here's hoping. I hope so. All right, Sean, where can people find you at? You can find my words about Nintendo on Engadget.com, and uh, I write a lot about Nintendo and other video game stuff almost exclusively, sometimes around other news about laptops and keyboards as well. If you're not interested in Nintendo for some reason and you're still watching this video, you can find me on YouTube.com slash Seanicus, S-E-A-N-I-C-C-U-S, Seanicus with two C's on YouTube and Twitter, where I talk about DuckTales way more than any 30-year-old adult probably should. <laughs> I don't know about that, but <laughs> you can find links to that in the description below. And of course, make sure to stay tuned to Game is Playing for lots more on the Super NES Classic Edition once we get it, hopefully soon. Um, if we get it, who knows? <laughs> and everything else Nintendo as well. Catch you later. Bye.